The Ahmadiyya sect of Islam has been subject to various forms of religious persecution and discrimination since the movement's inception in 1889. The Ahmadiyya Muslim movement emerged from the Sunni tradition of Islam and its adherents believe in all the five pillars and articles of faith required of Muslims. Ahmadis are considered non-Muslims by many mainstream Muslims since they consider Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the founder of the movement, to be the promised Mahdi and Messiah awaited by the Muslims. The Ahmadis are active translators of the Quran and proselytizers for the faith. However, in a number of countries, Ahmadis have faced strong resistance in many Muslim-majority nations. Ahmadis have been considered heretics and non-Muslim, and subjected to persecution and systematic, sometimes state-sanctioned, oppression. The Second Amendment to the Constitution of Pakistan and Ordinance XX declare Ahmadis to be non-Muslims and further deprive them of religious rights. Hundreds of Ahmadis were killed in the 1953 Lahore riots and the 1974 anti-Ahmadiyya riots. The May 2010 attacks on Ahmadi mosques, infamously known as the Lahore Massacre, resulted in the murder of 84 Ahmadis by suicide attack. The 1974 riots resulted in the largest number of killings of Ahmadis. <laughs> Pakistan For the five million Ahmadis, religious persecution has been particularly severe and systematic in Pakistan, which is the only state to have officially declared that Ahmadis are non-Muslims. Pakistani laws prohibit the Ahmadis from identifying themselves as Muslims, and their freedom of religion has been curtailed by a series of ordinances, acts and constitutional amendments. When applying for a Pakistani passport, Pakistanis are required to declare that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was an imposter prophet and his followers are non-Muslims. As a result, persecution and hate-related incidents are regularly reported from different parts of the country. Ahmadis have been the target of many violent attacks by various religious groups in Pakistan. Madrasas of all sects of Islam in Pakistan prescribe reading materials for their students specifically targeted at refuting Ahmadiyya beliefs. In a recent survey, students from many private schools of Pakistan expressed their opinions on religious tolerance in the country. The figures assembled in the study reflect that even among the educated classes of Pakistan, Ahmadis are considered the least deserving minority in terms of equal opportunities and civil rights. The teachers from these elite schools showed lower levels of tolerance towards Ahmadis than their pupils. Another example is Abdus Salam, the only recipient of the Nobel Prize for Physics who identified as a Muslim. For his mere allegiance to the Ahmadiyya sect, he had been ignored and excommunicated. There are no monuments or universities named after him. The word, Muslim, has been erased from his grave stone. 1953 In 1953 at the instigation of religious parties, anti-Ahmadiyya riots erupted in Pakistan, killing scores of Ahmadi Muslims and destroying their properties. There was severe agitations against the Ahmadis, including street protests, political rallies, and inflammatory articles. These agitations led to 200 Ahmadi deaths. Consequently, Governor General Ghulam Muhammad implemented martial law and dismissed Pakistan's federal cabinet. 1974 riots and constitutional amendment In 1974, a violent campaign, led mainly by the Majlis e Arur e Islam and Jamaat e Islami, began against the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Pakistan, on the pretext of a clash between Ahmadis and non Ahmadis at the railway station of Rabwa. This campaign resulted in several Ahmadi casualties and destruction of Ahmadiyya property, including the desecration of mosques and graves. As a result of pressure from this agitation, legislation and constitutional changes were enacted to criminalize the religious practices of Ahmadis by preventing them from claiming they are Muslim or from behaving as Muslims. These changes primarily came about due to the pressure of the Saudi king at the time, King Faisal bin as Saud, according to Dr. Mubashar Hassan, Prime Minister Bhutto's close confidant at the time. Pakistan's parliament adopted a law that declares Ahmadis non-Muslims. The country's constitution was amended to define a Muslim. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 as a person who believes in the finality of the Prophet Muhammad. Topic. Ordinance XX of 1984 
On 26 April 1984, General Muhammad Zia ul Haq, the President of Pakistan, issued the Anti Ahmadiyya Ordinance XX, which effectively prohibited Ahmadis from preaching or professing their beliefs. The ordinance, which was supposed to prevent anti Islamic activities, forbids Ahmadis to call themselves Muslim or to pose as Muslims. This means that they are not allowed to profess the Islamic creed publicly or call their places of worship mosques. Ahmadis in Pakistan are also barred by law from worshipping in non-Ahmadi mosques or public prayer rooms, performing the Muslim call to prayer, using the traditional Islamic greeting in public, publicly quoting from the Quran, preaching in public, seeking converts, or producing, publishing, and disseminating their religious materials. These acts are punishable by imprisonment of up to three years. Ordinance XX and the 1974 amendment to the Constitution effectively gave the state the exclusive right to determine the meaning of the term Muslim within Pakistan. Many Ahmadis were arrested within days of the promulgation of this ordinance, and it gave way for widespread sanction as well as non sanctioned persecution. In 1986, it was supplemented by a new blasphemy provision also applied to Ahmadis. Shab Kadar incident The Shab Kadar incident was a public stoning of two members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in the town of Shab Kadar, in the northwest frontier province, Pakistan in April 1995. Dr. Rashid Ahmad and his son-in-law, Riaz Ahmad Khan, were attacked as they were about to attend a court hearing in Shab Kadar. As they entered the court premises, a violent mob incited by local clerics attacked the men with sticks and stones. Riaz Khan was stoned to death and his dead body stripped and dragged through the town on a rope. Dr. Rashid Ahmad was taken to a hospital in Peshawar with serious injuries. A third Ahmadi, advocate Bashir Ahmad, escaped unhurt. This murder took place in front of the police. Riaz Khan even asked a police officer for help, but instead of helping, the officer pushed him away. According to Amnesty International, the police stood and watched and later pleaded that they could not have intervened in a situation like that. No one was detained or criminally charged for the killing. The victims, senior Ahmadiyya community members from Peshawar, had come from the provincial capital to file a bail application for another Ahmadi Muslim, Daulat Khan. Daulat Khan had been harassed following his conversion to the sect. Local Muslim clergy reportedly called for his death. Daulat Khan had been arrested and imprisoned on 5 April 1995 under sections 107 abetment and 151 disturbing the peace by joining an unlawful assembly of the penal code. After the lynching of Rashid Ahmad and Riaz Ahmad Khan, Daulat Khan remained in custody and was further charged with posing as a Muslim and preaching Ahmadiyyat section 298c of the penal code and insulting the religious sentiments of Muslims section 295a. Topic. 2000 On 30 October 2000, gunmen opened fire at an Ahmadiyya prayer meeting in the Pakistani province of Punjab, killing at least five worshippers and wounding another seven. Topic. 2005 On 7 October 2005, masked gunmen with Kalashnikov rifles stormed a mosque belonging to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in a village called Mong in district Mandi Bahadan, shooting dead eight people and wounding 14. 2008 Two prominent members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community were murdered on 8 and 9 September 2008 after a program by Amir Liaquat Hussain provoking people to kill Ahmadis was aired on a prominent Pakistani television channel Geo TV a day earlier on 7 September. 2009 During the year 2009, 11 Ahmadis were killed, while numerous others became victims of attempted killings, according to a report titled, Persecution of Ahmadis in Pakistan During the Year 2009, published by Nazarat Umar e Aama Sadr Anjuman Ahmadiyya Pakistan. The report claimed that the actions of Ahmadi opponents 
had been encouraged largely by the prejudiced attitude of the authorities, and alleged that the federal government had been in denial of the human rights and religious freedom of the Ahmadis, especially the governments of Punjab and Azad Jammu and Kashmir. 2010 April around 10 p.m. on 1 April 2010, three Ahmadis were returning home in their vehicle from their jewelry and cloth shops situated in Rail Bazaar in Faisalabad. As their car approached the canal road near Faisal Hospital, four or five unidentified militants in a white car ambushed them. The three Ahmadis were seriously injured when the men opened fire at them. The attackers managed to flee from the scene. The three men died before they reached the hospital. May Lahore attacks On 28 May 2010, two mosques in Lahore belonging to the Ahmadiyya Muslim community were attacked by the turek i taliban pakistan Punjab wing Punjabi Taliban. The attacks were carried out nearly simultaneously at Mosque Darul al-Zikr, Gari Shahu and Mosque Beit al-Nur Lahore model town, 15 km apart. More than 90 people were killed and 108 were injured in the incident. One attacker was killed, another was captured by worshippers. Three days later militants attacked the intensive care unit of Lahore's Jinnah Hospital, where victims and one of the alleged attackers were under treatment. Twelve people, mostly police officers and hospital staff, were killed in the shootout. The assailants escaped. The Pakistani government did nothing to prevent this, as of yet they have not set up protection for Ahamdas. As of 28 May 2013 the two attackers captured had not been prosecuted, but early in 2015 courts took up the case and proceeded with sentencing. On 31 May 2010, an Ahmadi was stabbed to death and his son seriously injured when an activist climbed the wall of their house with a dagger and attacked them. The son later died in hospital from serious wounds. The attacker escaped. Residents say that the assailant threatened to not leave any Ahmadi alive after having found motivation to kill them through a sermon given by a local fanatical Sunni cleric. 2011 On 7 September 2011, the mainstream Urdu newspaper Daily Jang published a special edition against Ahmadis. Throughout the year, Ahmadi students and teachers in the Pakistan's Punjab province have been systematically persecuted by schools and universities. The harassment has included social boycott, expulsions, threats, and violence by students, teachers, and principals of the Muslim majority sect. In education Ahmadi students faced discrimination in Pakistan in 2011 because of their faith. 2012 In Faisalabad, Quranic verses were removed from Ahmadi graves by the police. 3 December 2012, in Lahore, over 100 tombstones at an Ahmadiyya graveyard in Lahore were desecrated in the wee hours of Monday by masked gunmen, who specifically targeted graves with Islamic inscriptions. They proclaimed themselves members of a banned organization, and said the Ahmadiyyas had no right to use Quranic verses on their gravestones, as they are not Muslims. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan HRCP condemned the destruction of over 100 tombstones at an Ahmadi graveyard on Monday and demanded the arrests of those responsible. <laughs> anti ahmadis sentiment in media Islamic fundamentalism and Islamic extremism existed in the Pakistani media, causing them to start a hate campaign against Ahmadis. 2013 7 January 2013, four Ahmadi employees of Black Arrow Printing Press accused of publishing allegedly blasphemous books, were arrested as they loaded a small truck with thousands of books and CDs. On 13 February, an additional district and sessions judge on Tuesday rejected an application for after-arrest bail by four men accused of publishing allegedly blasphemous books about the Ahmadi faith. The 26 March 2013, local clerics attacked a house belonging to an Ahmadi family in the Shamsabad, a village of Kashmir district of Punjab on Tuesday and subjected the family members to violence allegedly over their religious belief. The five members of Mansour's family tried to take refuge in a room but the mob broke into the room as well. Mansour was severely tortured, after which he lost consciousness, while his wife and his 70-year-old uncle were also beaten. 
Police personnel were reportedly present at the spot but took no action against the mob, International Human Rights Commission Punjab Director General Munawar Ali Shaheed said. Several people here have told me that the Ahmadis had been socially boycotted for long. Police have taken no action to stop violence against them. Point three zero April 2013, in Lahore, Gulshan I Ravi police arrested seven members of the Ahmadi community on Monday without an fur, after close to 300 people protested in front of what was described as a place of worship of the community. A woman and her 10-year-old son were also arrested no, although no female members of the police accompanied them. Point eight May 2013, members of the Khat M.E. Nabuwat Lawyers Forum KNLF anti-Ahmadi activists and police dragged five members of the Ahmadi community from an anti-terrorist court to a police station and detained them for several hours. 2014 May 2014, American-Canadian Dr. Mehdi Ali Kamar, was gunned down in Rabwa while visiting Punjab, Pakistan to help train local doctors. 100 Ahmadiyas took refuge in China after their lives were in danger in Pakistan. Three members of the same family including one woman and two minors were killed and nine other people were injured when an angry mob set a house on fire in Arafat Colony, Gujranwala. 2015. On the Friday evening of 20 November 2015, a large mob, in an alleged case of blasphemy, torched down a chipboard factory, in Jhelum, Punjab, Pakistan. Ahmadi Muslim employees were accused of allegedly desecrating the Quran. The following day, rioters gathered in Kala Gujran, a town bordering Jhelum, and set ablaze an Ahmadiyya mosque and a number of homes belonging to Ahmadi Muslims. Although no casualties have been reported, Ahmadi Muslims have been arrested, against whom a blasphemy case has been registered. 2016 A mob of around 1,000 people besieged an Ahmadi place of worship in Chakwal and had to be dispersed by police. Deputy Commissioner Chakwal Mahmood Javid Badi said the mob hurled stones and bricks at the place of worship before storming the building, adding that gunmen opened fire on Ahmadis in the area. The DC said that police dispersed the crowd and secured the building. 2017 In an address to the National Assembly, Captain Safdar Awan, the son-in-law of deposed PM Nawaz Sharif, demanded strict restrictions against Ahmadis, calling for complete curbs on Ahmadis in government, army, and private employment. He similarly questioned whether Ahmadis could be loyal to Pakistan. On 12 October 2017, three Ahmadis were sentenced to death for blasphemy after tearing down posters that allegedly contained anti Ahmadi slogans, though prosecutors argued the posters carried religious significance. On October 20, an anti Ahmadi rally attracted 10,000 people where Ahmadis were denounced as infidels and enemies of the state. After a row regarding barriers to Ahmadi's participation in elections, the Pakistani government took out ads reaffirming a religious oath requiring elected officials to vow that they do not follow anyone claiming to be a prophet after Muhammad and, nor do I belong to the Qadiani group, using a common derogatory term for Ahmadis. 2018 On 6 February 2018, the Azad Jammu and Kashmir Legislative Assembly and Kashmir Council approved an amendment declaring Ahmadis as non Muslims. On March 8, 2018, Islamabad's High Court launched a judgment against Ahmadi Muslims and minorities, which resulted in four major incidents against Ahmadis in Pakistan. The High Court ordered all citizens apply for any type of government job to declare their religious beliefs. Western human rights organization have stated that this order is an attack on persecuted minorities in Pakistan as well as a method to intercept Ahmadi politicians on the 24th of May 2018 a mob of several hundred people in Sialkot Pakistan attacked and demolished a historic and culturally significant 100 year old Ahmadi mosque reports of collusion between the mob and local government officials were published but police denied such accusations a video on social media showed a crowd cheering on a local cleric who stated I want to thank the Sialkot administration, the DPO district police officer, DC district commissioner, the TMA town municipal corporation, from the bottom of my heart. 
The US, UK and international community strongly condemned this attack on the 27th of June 2018 in a hate crime linked to the March 8th High Court judgment. An Ahmadi was killed in Nishdar Colony, Lahore on the 9th of July 2018. Five Ahmadi Muslims in Karachi, Pakistan were shot in two incidents of hate crime. Three were injured and two were killed. In the first attack, an Ahmadi couple were attacked in their home. The wife was shot in the thigh by attackers. In the second attack, Mabin Ahmed, 20, was killed by robbers entering his office, and two colleagues were injured. Topic. Persecution of Ahmadi students Ahmadi students have faced extremist persecutions because of their faith in most popular universities and colleges of Pakistan including University of Sargadha. Topic. Other countries. Topic. Afghanistan Persecution of Ahmadis in Afghanistan began in the early 20th century within the lifetime of Ghulam Ahmad, the founder of the movement. Abdur Rahman, a disciple of Sayyid Abdul Latif of Khost, a reputable religious scholar who was the tutor and advisor on religious affairs to the prince later Amir Habibullah Khan, visited Qadian upon the latter's instruction. Having stayed there in the company of Ghulam Ahmad for some time and having pledged allegiance to him he returned to Afghanistan where he began preaching against the common notion of jihad as war. This information eventually reached the king, Amir Abdur Rahman Khan, who had him arrested and he was later strangled to death while in prison. It is not clear however whether this was a state-sanctioned execution or simply murder. He is considered the first martyr of Ahmadiyya Islam. About two years later, Abdul Latif himself visited Qadian before starting on the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca and stayed there for a few months, also joining the Ahmadiyya movement before returning to Afghanistan in 1903 to proselytize to his king, Amir Habibullah Khan. Upon reaching coast, he wrote to some courtiers who decided to have him arrested and brought to Kabul. He was put to trial and examined, first by the emir, then by Sardar Nasrallah Khan, another leading cleric, and then by a jury of twelve religious clerics, only two of whom gave a verdict of apostasy against him which carried the death penalty in Afghanistan. The emir thus charged him with apostasy. On 14 July 1903, after being repeatedly asked to renounce his beliefs and recant and refusing to do so, he was stoned to death before a large crowd. Frank A. Martin, the English engineer-in-chief to the government of Afghanistan at the time, who had witnessed the execution, giving an account of it in his book Under the Absolute Emir, writes, Before being led away from the emir's presence to be killed, the mullah Abdul Latif prophesied that a great calamity would overtake the country, and that both the emir and the sardar would suffer. About nine o'clock at night the day the mullah was killed, a great storm of wind suddenly rose and raged with violence for half an hour, and then stopped as suddenly as it came. Such a wind at night was altogether unusual, so the people said that this was the passing of the soul of the mullah. Then cholera came, and, according to former outbreaks, another visitation was not due for four years to come, and this was also regarded as part of the fulfillment of the mullah's prophecy, and hence the great fear of the emir and the prince, who thought they saw in all this their own death and it accounts also for the prince losing control of himself when his favorite wife died. Ahmadis see in the cholera epidemic that Kabul experienced within a month of the stoning, a sign of his and the movement's truth. By the 1920s, nearly 10 Ahmadis were stoned to death in Afghanistan and it is reported that a total of about three Ahmadis had been executed in Kabul during this period. In the 1920s, King Amanullah Khan had several Ahmadiyya members forcibly reverted, and in 1924 affiliation with the Ahmadiyya became a capital offense. Since then, no Ahmadiyya Muslims have been reported in Afghanistan, but a possibility of their existence remains. Topic. Algeria In March 2016, Algerian authorities refused an attempt by Ahmadis to register as an association under Algerian law. In June 2016, a planned Ahmadi mosque was raided and shut down in Larbra. Since March 2016, more than 280 Ahmadis have been arrested and have faced prosecution. Algerian officials have publicly called Ahmadis heretics and a threat to Algeria. In June 2016, the Minister of Religious Affairs and Endowments, Mohamed Aissa, described Ahmadi presence in Algeria as part of a prepared sectarian invasion. In February 2017, he stated that Ahmadis are not Muslim 
In April 2017, Ahmed Ouyahia, President Abdelaziz Bouteflika's chief of cabinet called on Algerians to "...preserve the country from the Shia and Ahmadiyya sects". <inaudible> Bangladesh In Bangladesh, Ahmadis have been targeted by various protests and acts of violence, and fundamentalist Islamic groups have demanded that Ahmadis be officially declared kafirs infidels. Some adherents of Ahmadiyya have been subject to house arrest, and several have been killed. In late 2003 several large, violent marches, led by Mulana Mohamud Hossein Mumtazi, were directed to occupy an Ahmadi mosque. In 2004, all Ahmadiyya publications were banned. Belarus In 2007, the Ahmadiyya were banned from practicing their faith openly in the state of Belarus and given a similar status to other banned religious groups in the country. Unable to obtain state registration, Ahmadi Muslims in the country who number about 30 including 13 native Belarusians, cannot conduct their activities formally as a collectivity such as importing or distributing literature, gathering together for prayers or meetings and having an official representative. Belgium Because Ahmadiyyas are married under what is called the Fiqh Ahmadiyya, which are the civil rules of the Ahmadiyya community in Pakistan, and because the Fiqh Ahmadiyya is not recognized in Pakistan, it frequently happens that a family reunion visa is not granted on the base that the Nika is not a valid marriage in the country of origin. Visas are then given to the minor children, but not to the spouse. In 2011, the far right party Vlaams Belang organized a demonstration against the projected building of an Ahmadi mosque in the Brussels municipality of UCCLE, allegedly out of fear for a war of religions between radical Sunnis and Ahmadis in the streets of the municipality. However, it should be noted that this party organizes demonstrations against every projected building of mosques, Ahmadi or not. Topic. Bulgaria In 2003, persistent attempts were made in Bulgaria by a local prosecutor and the National State Religious Affairs Directorate to strip Ahmadi Muslims of their legal status. Ahmadis in Bulgaria, who at the time claimed some 400 members across the country, were refused registration as a religious community on the grounds that they were against the religions that people follow here, and that other countries, such as Pakistan, also attack the religious freedom of Ahmadis, who are considered to be heretical by many Muslims. Failing to obtain a legal status, the Ahmadiyya community decided to seek registration as a noncommercial organization with the Blagovgrad Regional Court, where one of its biggest congregations is based. This too was rejected on the grounds that the community had been denied registration as a religion, and that only registered religious communities are allowed to create noncommercial entities to promote their faith." However, the community was able to successfully challenge this latter decision and gained registration as such in December 2005. Subsequently, their legal status as a noncommercial organization was again opposed by the Religious Affairs Directorate and the Regional Prosecutor's Office lodged a suit to the Regional Court calling for it to revoke the registration. The Bulgarian authorities cited the Pakistani government's legal measures against the Ahmadis as a reason to restrict their rights also. Most human rights and religious freedom activists have seen this denial of registration to the Ahmadi community as an exception. <inaudible> Egypt There has been a recent rise of persecution of Ahmadis in Egypt. In March 2010, nine Ahmadis were detained for allegedly insulting Islam. Topic: <inaudible> Gambia. Since its earliest history in the Gambia in the 1950s, Ahmadis have continued to face resistance and religious intolerance from certain Muslim clerics and Islamic bodies in the country. More recently, in 2014, a leading Gambian Muslim cleric, Al Haji Abduli Fadi, who was also the Imam of the State House of the Gambia at that time, called for the expulsion of Ahmadi Muslims from the country. Having described Ahmadi Muslims as non Muslims, he called for a ban on the propagation of Ahmadiyya teachings in the Gambia. In January 2015, the government financed Gambia Supreme Islamic Council aired on state television and other state and print media its decision to declare the community as a non Muslim group. 
The move was condemned by Baba Trawali, the Emir national president of the Gambian Ahmadiyya community and Demba Ali Jawo, former president of the Gambia Press Union. India In India, Ahmadis are Muslims by law. This is supported by a verdict from the Kerala High Court on 8 December 1970 in the case of Shahabuddin Imbichi Koya Thangal v. K.P. Ahamd Koya, Citation AIR. 1971 Kur 206. In this landmark ruling, the court determined that Ahmadis are Muslims and that they cannot be declared apostates by other Muslim sects because they hold true to the two fundamental beliefs of Islam, that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is a messenger of God, while Ahmadis are considered Muslims by law and there are no legal restrictions on their religious activities, they are not permitted by fellow Muslims of other sects to sit on the All India Muslim Personal Law Board, a body of religious leaders that the Indian government recognizes as representative of Indian Muslims. 2008 Ahmadis were denied permission to meet in Hyderabad because of the protests from the Islamic groups. On 19 August 2008 Islamic cleric named Malvi Habib ur Rahman incited hatred for the people in a rally. On the night of 21-22 August 2008, three Ahmadis were attacked. Their properties were damaged. In all, six persons were attacked. 2009 In Chennai, the body of a 36-year-old Ahmadi woman of the community was exhumed and desecrated by anti-social elements from a graveyard, at Royapeta on 1 June. Ahmadis alleged the police intervention in this issue. They did a press conference. They told the detail of the incident and persecution faced by Islamic clerics. Madras High Court has ruled that Ahmadis are Muslims. Muslims led by Shahi Imam Habib ur Rahman Sani protested against Jalsa Salana. Muslims all across the state have joined hands in the protests. Indian Finance Minister Pranab Mukherjee was likely to attend the Jalsa Salana. Muslims damaged his office and blocked the traffic for stopping the annual convention of Ahmadis. Police imposed curfew for three days. Many people were injured and one Sikh died. When the convention was held, the protesters presented anti Ahmadiyya document to the chief commissioner to be forwarded to Prakash Singh Badal. The protest was organized in all the big mosques of Punjab. 2010 Islamic clerics threatened the Mayawadi government to remove mentions of the Ahmadiyya sect from the syllabus. 2011 In Mumbai, Darul Uloom Dioband had asked Saudi Arabia's government to ban Ahmadis from doing Hajj. The spokesperson said that Ahmadis do not believe in the finality prophethood therefore they cannot do Hajj. They sent a letter to the government. In New Delhi, Ahmadis faced protests from rival Muslim sects for attempting to preach their religion. They faced protests from the Muslims of India. All India Muslim Personal Law Board's members were also among the protesters. Ahmadis changed the timings of the convention. Maulana Bukhari and his protesters were detained in a police station for protesting against this. 2012 In Hyderabad, an anti-Ahmadiyya mob attacked the mosque and said to stop the prayers. They also threw stones at the mosque. Indonesia. 2008 In 2008, many Muslims in Indonesia protested against the Ahmadiyya movement. With violence and large demonstrations, these religious conservatives put pressure on the government to monitor, and harass the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Indonesia. Public opinion in Indonesia is split in three ways on how Ahmadiyya should be treated. A, some hold it should be banned outright on the basis that it is a heretical and deviant sect that is not listed as an officially recognized religion in Indonesia. B, others hold that it should not be banned because of the freedom of religion article in the constitution, but also should not be allowed to proselytize under the banner of Islam on the basis that this is misleading. C, still others hold that it should be free to do and say as it pleases based on the constitutional right to freedom of religion. In June 2008, a law was passed to curtail proselytizing by Ahmadiyya members. An Ahmadiyya mosque was burned. 
Human rights groups objected to the restrictions on religious freedom. A government decree adopted in 2008 under pressure from Islamic conservatives bans the sect from spreading its faith. 2010 In July 2010, a mob of 200 Indonesians surrounded an Ahmadi mosque in Manislar village in Kuningan district, West Java. The mob pelted the mosque with stones before being dispersed by the police. 2011 On 6 February 2011 three originally reported as six, and later amended Ahmadiyya members were killed at Pandaglang, Banten Province, in a clash between locals. While the government did instruct police to hunt the killers, it also called on Ahmadiyya to abide by the 2008 decree and stop spreading their belief. In July 2011, the prosecuting sought sentences of between five and seven months for the defendants, an act that caused outcry by rights activists. The verdict given was between three and six months, slightly lighter than sought. This has triggered criticism from human right defenders and the international community, including the US and the EU. In addition, a Sikhiusik Ahmadi leader, Didan Dharmawan Sudhyana, was also sentenced to six months in prison for physical abuse and acts against the state, refusing an order from a police officer who told him to leave the house. A U.S. State Department spokeswoman said they were disappointed with the verdict, while an activist of the New York-based Human Rights Watch, called it the Talibanization of Indonesia. <laughs> Malaysia. In April 2009, the Selangor Islamic Religious Council of Malaysia issued a letter that forbade members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community from offering Friday prayers at their central mosque. Moreover, Ahmadi's failure to comply with the order would result in imprisonment of up to one year and or a fine up to 3,000 Malaysian ringgit. A large notice outside the mosque states Qadiani Bukan Agama Islam, which translates to Qadiani Ahmadiyyat is not Islam. Topic. Palestine Ahmadis were reported to be persecuted in the Palestinian Authority-controlled areas in 2010. In 2010, Muhammad Sharif Oda, head of the Ahmadi community in Israel, told Eretz Shiva Radio that the Palestinian Authority is "...encouraging the cold-blooded murder of Ahmadis," by failing to take concrete action to protect the community. Saudi Arabia Ahmadis are persecuted in Saudi Arabia on an ongoing basis. Although there are many foreign workers and Saudi citizens belonging to the Ahmadiyya sect in Saudi Arabia, Ahmadis are officially banned from entering the country and from performing the Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina. <laughs> United Kingdom 2009 In 2009 a demonstration consisting of mainly Muslims was held in Walsall to prevent Ahmadis acquiring a mosque. 2010 In 2010, in the wake of the May 2010 attacks on two Ahmadi mosques in Lahore, Pakistan, members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community living in the UK were threatened and intimidated. Certain Muslim groups in South London distributed leaflets asking readers to kill Ahmadis and boycott their businesses, and Ahmadi mosques in Crawley and Newham were vandalised. In October 2010 Ofcom criticised the UK-based UMA channel for broadcasting three interactive television programmes before and after the Lahore massacre of Ahmadi Muslims in May 2010, in which religious leaders and callers alike said that Ahmadis should be killed. These programmes were repeated several times. Ofcom stated that the program's abusive treatment of the religious views and beliefs of members of the Ahmadiyya community breached UK broadcasting regulations. Nasser Butt, a Liberal Democrat parliamentary candidate for the general election, was targeted by a campaign that asked Muslims not to vote for him because of his faith. In the election, hustings in the Tooting Islamic Centre, a Conservative candidate, Mark Clark, was mistaken for Butt and had to be locked in a room for his safety. Imam Suleiman Ghani, of the Sunni Tooting Islamic Centre, called for a boycott of Ahmadi shops, stating, Since the Qadianis are routinely deceptive about their religion, there was a potential risk of Muslims being offered meat that wasn't necessarily halal. 2016 Murder of Assad Shah 
In March 2016, an Ahmadi Scottish shopkeeper Asad Shah was stabbed to death in Glasgow after wishing people a happy Easter on social media. The Daily Mail reported, "...police suspect the incident was religiously prejudiced and have arrested a 32-year-old Muslim man belonging to the rival Sunni sect over the murder." On 29 March 2016, the murderer's name was revealed as Tanvir Ahmed. On 6 April 2016, Tanvir Ahmed stated, "...that he killed Asad Shah," and claimed, "...if I had not done this others would." An Ahmadi anti-extremism campaign was launched in Glasgow, with attendance of Ahmadi Muslims, Christian, Sikh, and Jewish leaders, but no Muslims belonging to other sects. The murderer pleaded guilty to the "...religiously motivated murder." Part of the family of the victim is emigrating away from Scotland. <laughs> Hate leaflets In April 2016, leaflets were distributed across London's universities, mosques and shopping centres, calling for the killing of Ahmadis. The leaflets were by Muhammad Yusuf Ludianvi, with the Katmi Nubuat organisation on the front cover. <laughs> In the media. Muslim television Ahmadiyya International MTA has produced four documentaries regarding the persecution of Ahmadiyya Muslim community over the last century. The Early Years 1953 1974 1984 present 2008 Topic Anti-Ahmadiyya parties Political groups associated with the persecution of the Ahmadis include the Majlis e Arur e Islam, Katmi Nabuwat movements, Majlis e Tahafuz e Katmi Nabuwat, Pasban Katmi Nabuwat, Tanzim e Islami and Tariq e Katmi Nabuwat, Jamaat e Islami, Turik i Taliban Pakistan and Tariq i Labayak Pakistan. Topic: <laughs> United Kingdom UMA Channel, broadcast three interactive programs against Ahmadis in the wake of Lahore Massacre. Ofcom criticized UMA Channel for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders of groups associated with the persecution of Ahmadis Maulana Sanaula Amritsari, Fateh Qadian, conqueror of AHMDIYYA. Syed Atta Allah Shah Bukhari, founder of Majlis e Arur e Islam, Syed Abuzer Bukhari, former president of Majlis e Arur, Muhammad Yusuf Ludianvi, leader of Khat M e Nubuat, Abdul Latif Khalid Chima, secretary general of Majlis e Arur e Islam, Aga Shorish Kashmiri, editor of Chatan, Janbaz Mirza, editor of Tabsara. Discrimination and pejorative terms by Muslims Topic. Terms Qadiani and Mirzai are the pejorative terms used by non-Ahmadi Muslims from the Indian subcontinent. Topic. See also Islamic schools and branches Sectarian violence Topic References Topic External Links Website about persecution of Ahmadis Justice Munir Enquiry Report on Anti Ahmadiyya Riots of nineteen fifty three Urdu Justice Munir Enquiry Report on Anti Ahmadiyya Riots of nineteen fifty three English Persecution of Ahmadis in Pakistan Facts and figures Pictures of those martyred in 1974 Ahmadis murdered during 2009 Eight-part MTA series 1974 From Democracy to Extremism, 1234567823 Solid evidence of political interference against Ahmadiyya Jamid in 1974 on YouTube